Nice to be bullish for a little while. And this is the bearish count for the S&P 500. I'm not saying that it is bearish. I'm just saying this would be the bearish count. And I think it's important to understand that. And this means that we would have from wave B here would have one, two, three, four, and five here. And the 4,300 here is roughly the 61.8% brings in this old high over here. Obviously this old high here will give the market a, um, a reasonable resistance at 4,200, but we're expecting five waves up here. So we'll have wave one here and a pullback for wave two, and then three, four, and five coming into this space. This is where it can fail. And this is where it can come down for uh, for wave C somewhere down here. I won't go into that at the moment, but that would be the A wave here, the A, the B and the C wave here. Now, of course, we've got bullish counts as well, but I'm not going to call the market bullish, bullish and taking out the top here until we get past this move here. Now, when I look at all the markets, all the indices, um, they can all have bullish counts except for the Russell 2000. The Russell 1000 can have a bullish count and the Russell 3000 can have a uh, a, a bullish count as well. So let's just have a quick look at that. This is the S&P low volatility market that we follow uh, here. And um, this to me is really quite bullish. I mean, we can have one, two, three, four, five here, and that would make, uh, currently I've got this as the A, the B and the C here, which suits it quite nicely. Uh, wave two is a little bit big, so that's a bit daunting. It, it looks more like a B wave. So the bearish count here would be bringing this over to here and looking at this is an A and a B and a C. This is one of the best looking bullish counts. I mean, well, the Dow Jones is quite quite good as well. So I just wanted to just have a look here for a moment. If I just move that out of the way and uh, where is the um, little culprit here somewhere? Maybe it's down here. Here it is. So we've got, we've got, um, well, let's just start here. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, I can even look at the Dow transports as being bullish from the upside of one, two, three, four, five, up for one or an A in the back here and so on. Um, but staying with this for a moment, this would be the Russell 1000. So I can count one and two here, one, two and, and three, four, five here for this. So that's doable, not the best looking uh, structure and then we've got the 3000 here where you can see it's quite sort of bullish uh, it, it could be viewed as bullish all of this pattern here there's no you know it hasn't taken out the low here like the Russell 2000 has taken out this low here which kind of destroys this first move here so if I look at the Russell here so without labeling it I'm just pointing out that um, from the low here on the daily chart we can view this here as being breached here. So it's difficult to, to look at this as one and two and one and two here. I mean, I could look at it as wave one here with an A wave, a B wave and a C wave here. That's probably doable, but it doesn't really give me a nice B wave here. All I'm saying is that <clears throat> this particular market is one of the most bearish here. It's got 8% regional banks in it. Um, in the meantime, we can expect it to move up here somewhere. And uh, if th when the others turn bearish, well, then it can turn bearish from that point. I'm just saying that because of this overlapping wave structure here, this is not a good look for a, for a big bullish picture. So um, I think it's important, you know, when we are in a bullish market, uh, to look at the bearish side of things and understand where that risk uh, price point is. And um, I would suggest that it would be around the 4.3 at this point, and this would be the bearish count. You could probably have other bearish counts. It's not to say that I'm right. Um, uh, I get it wrong just as much as the next person. And, you know, the good thing about Elliot is that many different people can have different counts. And I think it's important to take them all on board and they can be right and they can be wrong as well. Um, but it's good if we can just, uh, between all of us, nail down exactly where the situation is. So this is the bearish count. And it's possible to say, well, Pete, with this move up here now, that first five waves, is it possible to have that as a five wave, if that five waves here at that point. Um, I've looked at that, but uh, looking around at other markets, it does appear that the bias would be to have five waves up here. 
rather than just five in this first wave and calling that top in there. It's possible, probable, but uh, unlikely at this point. So um, I might need to change that, but just to let you know that that's where that is. Uh, the bullish count can be viewed in terms of... Um, well, it's kind of interesting, really, because if we go back to this point here and go to the low volatility S&P here, and there's a few indexes that, that handle this sort of thing here. So <coughs> as you can see here, we are getting, you know, we've got five waves over here, so we should get another five over here. If this is all just wave one here, then you can see that we're going to be here for quite some time, isn't it? You know, I don't think it's just going to give us three waves uh, here. I don't think that's going to be the case. So looking at this as wave one here as a date point, and this one over here as wave two over here as a date point, this brings us in around the 20th of March, the equinox or whatever it is, so I won't get too spacey, but um, so this brings us in over here for, well, not quite on that, but um, reasonably uh, close on that. So it kind of, because I think it's really important to, um, you can have a wave count and that can sort of look good, but if it doesn't fit in with the rest of the market, with the other markets, and, and each market, each product can have their own individual wave count, but in some way they kind of got to all fit together when they come to the end or the next beginning to some point or rather. So bringing them all together is, is, is a little bit important. So, um, yeah, so in this case here, this would be the bullish count, and this is kind of interesting. So... Uh, here we've got one, two, three, four, just like on the other on the other thing, and we're looking for wave five to go up. Now, as I mentioned, we can count five waves up to this first top here, and that that could be a top at that point. But we're thinking that I'm thinking that we can have um, uh, as one and two here, and three and four and five here. This type of situation here. Now we won't know if we're going to be bullish in this market unless we can identify this as a wave two. Now that's going to be a bit tricky because wave twos are very much like impulse waves because there'll be a five, three, five structure here. Um, and that would also be like an impulse wave. So yeah, we might be able to pick it up in some other markets. But once we finish these five waves here, um, then we can look at being taking this one out here. And if that's the case, then all of this five wave structure here we would see that, um, you know, that's 500 points here, roughly speaking. So we could see the third wave it be, being 500 points, you know, taking us much higher at that point. So I won't know that we're bullish until we get to this point here. And the only sort of caveat along the way that if I have, if I do make a mistake, it will be here in this little area through here. So bringing this wave in this case, well, not this wave one here, but in the last, in the bearish picture of this five waves here. Now, let's just go in and have a look at these five waves here. Now, I've got other count because this is a little bit messy in here. I do have other counts. I won't go into it at the moment. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow or the next day. Uh, you have seen the counts before, um, but I want to, I just want to allow what I've mentioned today to soak in. Um, it's not new, we've said it before, um, but it doesn't hurt to reinforce uh, things and everything's going pretty much according to plan. We were looking for way forward to finish. We're looking to build into long trades uh, through here, not just in the NASDAQ, uh, not just in the S&P and the NASDAQ and, and whatnot, but also mainly in stock. So. Uh, let's just go in. I'm just going to go to, I'll just check on, see, because when I go into these other counts, I could have this as a different thing here. I'll just go to, go into, to this one here. So, okay, this one's okay. So this is just a 5k tip chart. So we're looking at one, two, three, four, and five here. And then we're going to look for an ABC pattern. Now, of course, the ABC pattern uh, can, wherever that comes in here, I would su pro suggest it will probably just come above there somewhere. 10 is always a nice number between 10 and 20, but we'll see what that looks like. So it is possible um, if you're holding on to things that the market could pull back to this area through here. That's possible. 
<coughs> I think because it's struggling at not struggling at all really is sort of moving through quite well um, I'm just going to put this here at the top there um, <coughs> well it is struggling it's just hit that isn't it so we can see that's 170 so we know that between you know got 100 200 and 300 that's all minor group one and between each 100 here these will all be these will be sub levels so we can count 10 20 and 30 for group one 50 the midpoint and then 165 172 and 180 for group two so i think that that will become the the uh supporting area here so we can go into probably we talk 165 we can probably allowed a bit of a jab down so 162 would be quite nice at that point so we may not come this deep if you're holding on to um, uh, positions further down here um, but uh, the normal process is is that we would move up here we'd have a classic trading levels pattern here so we'd end up with something like this here something like this before moving to the upside so we'll try to build in you know, we'll, 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 I'll see where the stock market is in certain stocks. If I can see that they need to push up, then we can buy the pullback here. This will be a 535 five structure. We'll be able to buy the pullback or we'll get the first impulse wave up. And anyway, we'll, we'll try to build in through here. Um, <clears throat> so this also group one here, 10, 20, 30. So let's just continue to move in here on the today now this here is um this is labeled a little bit differently here because this is the bearish count um we've got wave four here with one two three four five four one and two here <clears throat> um so i'm just going to go into we were on the 100 here without boring you to death um but it's kind of good to know where we are at this point so so this wave four here we're looking up here as um we count we started counting here on last last week we started counting one and two and three and four and five for one and two and then we'll i think we're up here somewhere three four and now we're going up for wave five and it's kind of interesting really because when i think about wave five here uh maybe i've got uh, maybe i'm going to put that wave one just in here but i think i think i'm on the right track here of one and two and then one and two and three four five for the third fourth and fifth so we can kind of see here that um this is what we want we want that first high above the level and then we want the abc pattern here and this will all be in sort of the group two area here there'll also be group one above here and that's where you need to be scaling in at <clears throat> so once the for four two thirty here becomes the tested support then you know that the market's leaving this number and will be going up to the next number at that point but we we need some sort of pattern here to to play out so this is the normal the arrival the reaction the first high above the level the abc so we want to be able to catch it here we start from the top and work down and getting the entry um, but we can refine that further and move in over here. But it's nice to move in on the first impulse wave because if you've got the first impulse wave and then you've got a little ABC coming back, then you can manage your risk with your stops correctly. And yeah, just a better, you know, because you don't want to expose yourself too much. So yeah, I think that's kind of it at this point. So a classic trading levels pattern at minor level two within group one and group two below will be the swing range for those okay so most of the other markets will be much the same as well in terms of this particular pattern here like approaching wave one and going back for wave two okay so just take that on board so this is the nasdaq here we looked at um well we've been all you know we've been working through this abc pattern here you could probably label it <coughs> differently it's a bit of a dog's breath and um and then it started so wave one and two and three and four and you can see that wave five's not finished here so there's always you know this wave two here in this case there's two main points here one is the old top here that will offer was resistance here originally and now that's going to offer support for this wave two over here as will wave four here so in terms of it pulling back it could pull back to thirteen thousand one hundred. 
and the 100, 200, and 300 is minor group one of 13,000, the Fibonacci number there. So we'll be looking to build in um, over here, over, over this side here for that as well. So now Friday's momentum will follow through into Monday. So we'll see that profit taking coming in on Tuesday. And uh, then, um, yeah, we'll talk about all of that bullish weekly cycle. But in this case here, we'll just be basically looking for one, two, three, four, five. Now, when we get to here, this could also be the top of the bear market at this point, And this is where it can turn lower. So all we need to do, I know it's hard, is to do nothing. So we'll just chill and there'll be a few blind spots and days where we won't know what's going on. We can take short positions and trade against the trend and those sort of things. We can, you know, enjoy ourselves. But as long as you know that we need, well, as far as I'm concerned anyway, I mean, uh, if you if you know something that um, I don't, then obviously do you, do your own thing. But basically in terms of Elliot, I have to wait for this to complete. You know, I need to, I'll probably see it in stocks or I'll see it in some other markets before I recognize it here, here, you know, I'll, 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 but this here, you know, once that, once we've got five waves here and then a three wave counter trend, anything above that, we're bullish, but um, <clears throat> we'll have to look at the bigger bullish picture and see how far it can actually come back down as well. But uh, yeah, we'll be looking at all sorts of markets and there will be a quiet spot there. That's all I'm saying. Um, and by all means, yes, we, we, we can short it, but uh, let's just see how it all goes. Um, so that's the NASDAQ. Uh, this is the Russell here. Um, so I'm just looking at the Russell here. There's probably different ways to look at it. I, all I can do is look at five waves moving to the upside with the rest of the market. So I'm looking at wave one here with an ABC for the A wave and the B wave and the C wave. I'm not really... This whole count with wave one, he doesn't really sit very well with me. <clears throat> it's not sort of locked in as such, but um, I'll just stay with the intraday here. So you can see this is wave one and two here. This will be wave three and four, just like the other ones. So here we're going to have wave five. It's going to hit this supply over here, all the 61.8%. The dance is going to be, the correction is going to be in group two here, and then we can push up here. And this is also going to be quite, tough to get through at this point but being a third wave here it will have a little bit of volume coming into it and everybody will be pretty chirpy and happy with uh, what's going on so it should get through okay but it will still splutter and um, cough along so to speak so that's uh, that's the Russell um, we'll talk close more closely about that a bit later the Dow Jones um, this is just actually the bullish count here with wave two here um, but I think it's fantastic that, you know, we've had this correction here and um, yeah, so, you know, when we look at, let's just go and have a look at this in the bigger picture here for a moment. Um, this one here, <clears throat> I mean, the Dow Jones reminds me of the, of the European indices, actually, the way that it's um, <clears throat> moved up, you know, because the European indices are all up, taking out the tops here, you know. So um, <clears throat> we can look at it as wave one here with an A and a B and a C for wave two. And then we're looking at this being, you know, we've got these five waves moving up here that we're just counting now. It's clear as a bell. It's one and two and three and four and five here. So then we can look back for wave two here and then three, four, five. So <laughs> it looks like it wants to take out the top. But even if it does take out that top, we've either got an A wave and a B wave and a C wave where that wave three is there <clears throat> and have some massive expanded flat correction where the market comes down here for the A wave. Uh, whoops, I've got the wrong tool, which makes a tool out of me. So then we've got this as an A, B and C wave up here and then as a for a B wave and then if it's going to be bearish, the C wave would have to come down like this as a big expanded flat. <clears throat> it's not impossible um we'll see you know i mean all we're really looking at is you know this length here to be the same as same as this length over here so we're going to get five waves within that you know but the strong there's a stronger case for um for for the bullish case but at the same time <clears throat> you know we've got to um I've got can't rule things out. 
So, so obviously this is going to come up into those old highs here and that will be wave two and we'll see how wave three goes, how strong and long it is and all the rest of it. And, but the time that's going to take, you know, that's five waves here. So this is more, you know, this to have this three, four, five here, that's a completely, <coughs> that's much longer to, in terms of time than, um, than, the, than the NASDAQ and the S&P have got to reach their, you know, conclusions, you know. So when we look at the, the um, well, we should really look at the, um, the S&P, but, you know, the, the NASDAQ, is, I haven't shown the bigger picture on the NASDAQ, but one, two, three, four, five here, that's not going to, you know, that's going to happen way before before this, you know, this wave, th this third wave is going to be here, you know, and this is not going to be, this is not, this is so clear that it's five waves here. It's not going to be an A and a B and a C up here for a B wave. I, I can't see that happening. So coming back over here to the, uh, let's just go to the daily chart here for a moment and just, I'm just shooting the breeze here, really just chatting away. So this, um, you know, this this here, you know, has five waves up here. We're already nearly at wave one and we've had one, two, three days here. So say so if we have four days here or even five, five, 10, 15 days, right, then 15 days to finish off, there's like there's more than 15 days in just in wave one here for, for this, you know. So something's not right somewhere. So, <clears throat> um, yeah. But in the meantime, it doesn't, you know, uh, don't have, I don't have all the answers, but uh, in the meantime, we can um, look to trade up. It'll be interesting to see if this, the, this plays out, um, is five waves here. I mean, because the only other way I can think about this happening is putting wave C here. But it's so short compared to wave A here in that case, you know. But it's something that we'll have to keep an eye on. Um, but it won't make any difference either because... You know, when, when the, when the S&P and the NASDAQ finish this five waves here, well, then we'll, you know, the stock market's going to come down at that point as well. Now we can look to short this, but, uh, we'll just be sort of quiet in this particular point here. There'll be blind spots in here and we won't know what's going on. But at the same time, the rest of the world will be thinking, you know, the media will be, you know, the commentators will be pumping it up. You know what I mean? So. Uh, they'll all be changing their minds from this and that and so on. <laughs> they just go with the flow, don't they? They just talk about how the market is right now. Um, anyway, that's um, that's that. So anyway, that's my two bobs worth. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Cheers.